Okay, so this is the last presentation of the evening, so I'm going to be uh, fairly quick. This is also a very simple application that I'm going to show. I'm just going to go over very uh, just four or five slides uh, talking about uh, you know the use of, of, of scanning for uh, producing 3D models. Uh, as w I covered before on the on the previous presentation, uh, uh, we can use also scanners to produce our uh, 3D uh, models for printing. Um, that's why we use uh, 3D scanning because it's a uh, it's a way to produce uh, fast and, and easy uh, uh, models. We just require an existing uh, physical model and then uh, of course an, a method for uh, 3D imaging. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to use the example that we're going to uh, be presenting is a, it's a processing application with uh, with uh, Kinect. Um, the uses and applications of, of 3D scanning, we've gone over uh, most of them uh, through the course of this uh, very intense afternoon that we've had. But uh, some of the examples that we, pr we have uh, seen today are, of course, in the, in the medics field uh, using very high-end, very professional, very expensive equipment like uh, CAT equipment, RMI and ultrasound uh, equipment as well. Um, it's used from anywhere from producing prosthetics uh, limbs or uh, organs, uh, also uh, models for uh, bone carving. Some of this was uh, talked about today uh, where, where uh, surgeons uh, need to produce a model by physically, by hand carving from an existing piece of bone and they use a 3D model obtained by one of these uh, imaging um, systems and so they can produce the physical uh, and printed uh, model that they're going to produce then by carving. So this assists them on the surgery, cutting down uh, surgery times uh, greatly. Uh, also in um, paleontology, these are just a few examples, but in paleontology they, this is also very uh, important because we can uh, reproduce existing bones, of course, uh, that may be unique, very rare and hard to find, also very fragile, so we can uh, print them the way the paleontologists uh, reproduce uh, bones or uh, things that they have found is usually by doing uh, models by casting. And this is, can be a bit uh, traumatic for the piece itself. When we use uh, 3D scanning techniques, we can uh, not even touch the, the piece, we can just uh, uh, obtain the, um, the model and then we can reproduce and then we can touch it as much as, as, as we want without, uh, we can even break it if we want, we will just print another piece, no problem. Also for educational purposes this is very uh, obviously very uh, important uh, as I said before the example being in a museum well this can be also uh, used for teaching uh, students about uh, bones, uh, bone structure also in medical field of course uh, what, what's convenient about this is it more or less ubiquitous because these low-cost 3D scanners can be found very easily. They, they cost uh, brand new 100 uh, euros. You can find them easily used on eBay or on uh, used uh, parts place for maybe half of that. Uh, they also they can be all these scans can be reproduced anywhere there there is a 3D printer and 3D printers are of course becoming more ubiquitous uh, uh, every time and also of course uh, ludic examples and uh, ludic uses for example the, one, the, the previous example shown about the sculptures uh, for art students and also what well, the, the uh, MoMA example that we talked about and of course what we're going to produce today what we're going to the, the, what we're going to present today is of course a very completely ludic uh, example of this is to to create these pieces these were uh, scanned and printed uh, here this was printed uh, yesterday this was printed the day before and this is just you know uh, just the figurines of people that we have scanned here just pass this around and of course it's very uh, rough, but you can actually uh, probably tell who was uh, scanned. Using this uh, technique, it's a very, um, very coarse uh, result, it's very raw. Uh, using just one Kinect, one can only scan what's in front of the Kinect. Whatever is producing a shadow will not be, of course, scanned, so it, it will just make a will just be like a, a plan, a plan uh, behind the, the person. So the, 
Professional scanners, of course, have very, very good uh, quality, depending on, on what we're talking about. The imaging system that we're using in the medical fields can range from 50,000 and upward uh, euro cost uh, for you know ultrasound, RMI, RMI, CAT scans, and whatnot. For if you were progressing down on the scale, professional laser scanners can produce the figurine that I showed on the previous presentation and that we also have here from a sculpture scan at the, at the MoMA. Yes, you can pass this around, please. You can see that the quality, of course, is way, way uh, a lot better than, than that we can produce with a scanner. But of course, um, the price is, is pretty steep. They, of course, have been coming down on price as um, 3D printers become more and more ubiquitous. They have come down almost to the 500 uh, euro uh, cost. And for very nice, uh, very professional, very good quality uh, pieces, of course, small pieces, but nevertheless, uh, good, uh, good, good quality. And uh, of course, there's also another way to do this uh, with picture stitching applications. And uh, this, of course, again, is very ubiquitous. We, we can do it with a mobile phone. A good example of this is uh, an application from the 123D uh, design um, group from Autodesk. They produce an app for a mobile phone where you can just use uh, the, your mobile phone to produce many, many, many uh, pictures of one object. From 20 to 40 pictures are, are necessary to produce a good quality uh, image. And the nice thing about uh, picture stitching applications is uh, you cannot go into uh, any museum with, you know, take out your laser scanners and start scanning sculptures. You will get, uh, you will get frowned upon in the worst case scenario and, uh, you know, or in the best case scenario, sorry, in the worst case scenario, you will be sent to jail maybe, uh, or probably fine. But anyway, we're stepping in a sort of legal, um, you know, territory that is not completely, um, it's not completely settled yet. But anyway, you, what you can do, however, you can go to any museum and take as many pictures as you want of some sculptures, not all sculptures, but some sculptures. And you can take many, many pictures and nobody's gonna say anything. And then with that, you can produce very nice uh, looking uh, prints. I'm gonna show you an example of this. Uh, even though it's, oops, sorry. This is uh, Cosmo Weinman's uh, Cosmo Weinman is an artist that produced uh, these, uh, these. He scanned, well, not not scanned, but he made photographs of these sculptures in a museum. You know, nobody asked him any questions. He took, uh, I don't know, maybe it wasn't even in the hundreds, but maybe pr close to a hundred photographs of of this head of uh, an existing sculpture, head of a horse. And uh, believe it or not, this is actually printed in PLA. Uh, it's, an, it's an sculpture. Both of these are printed in PLA. You can sort of see here the, where the modules, where the pieces have been joined together. This is, I think, I don't know, it says here about how many pieces, but it's, um, it's probably in the 30s. I think it was 30 pieces. It was done on a, on a on a 3D printer in PLA. And then it was, of course, uh, sanded, it was put together, and it was then given a nice coat of, of paint to give it that bronze-like um, finish. But it's, uh, it's really nice, and this was made with the 1, 2, 3D app that I talked about before. It's a free application. Anybody can have it in their phones and produce this type of, of results without any problems. It's very easy to use. And let's see. Um, so the, these applications can go from you know from to be free to maybe a couple of, of euros. So it's really nice. And then of course what we're going to talk about is uh, 3D scanning using uh, using in this case uh, a Kinect, but you can also use any other kind of of um, this similar type of technology. Asus has another one called the Action. These are low cost, of course. They are Low resolution, uh, not, ver not very great, but they, as a proof of concept, they, they uh, serve. And uh, other examples of use 
for uh, this type of uh, controllers, but used with another application, the reconstruct me application, which also has a, it's not uh, open source, but it's it's they have a free version. It's pretty heavy on 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 graphic uh, card requirements. Uh, Cosmo Women's I showed you before. There's I'm gonna show you quickly about the Blabla uh, Lab um, project, which was a co uh, project called um, Be Your Own Souvenir. It was done in the Ramblas in, in Barcelona a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, it's about th 2011. What they did is was pretty much use the same uh, Xbox uh, controller, the Kinect, but using three. So they could have a full 360 degree scan of, uh, of a person. And what they did was scan the people that were doing, who were walking around the Ramblas. I don't know if you know, the Ramblas in Barcelona is a very, very uh, touristic place of Barcelona. A lot of people are there, a lot of street performers, a lot of people on the street just doing uh, nice things and pretty much selling you um, very touristic uh, crap. and. Um, Souvenirs and whatnot. So what they did is was this uh, street action called "Be Your Own Souvenir," where they would scan you and then they would uh, print you, and you would be your own souvenir. They would give it to you for free. Of course, you had to wait a little bit, like for half an hour between uh, the mesh was being repaired and the, and the software was doing all the work, and of course then the printing time. So uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, just an example of this application. And uh, this is a processing application, very, very simple to use. So I'm trying not to make a shadow here. As you can see, you can see me here. <laughs> then you can see the range of the Kinect. If I get too close, you won't see anything. And if I get too far, I probably at some point will fade away in the, in the background. But this is a very simple thing to use. And you can, you know, you can just make it it's really fun to play around with. Uh, and so I'm gonna need somebody to just stand here while I operate the the application. It's just two clicks. So if anybody can just stand here, and, and whoever stands here will, can get printed afterwards. <laughs> Thank you, Carlo. Somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> My profile is very exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we can edit that later. <laughs> So anyway, I can just uh, play around here. I can see that uh, I'm, I'm very far off. My plane, my back plane is very far off from, from Carlos. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it. So because otherwise, I'm just going to have just, just empty, empty space behind him. And I just want to print uh, just the data. Yes? And then, so this is very basic. Here, I can just move around. Yeah? And then I, OK, so you're stepping on a wrench. Here, I can move the plane. So it can be in front of him, or it can be behind him. So I just want him to be just touched by the, by the plane. Yeah, like this is sort of, sort of good. And then let me just set here. Hold on one second. And then I can, OK, nice. So I'm just going to click. Uh, yeah, you can't see the letters very well, but here I can choose how many points I want to take. More quality means more data. And then I just click here on build. And then I go, I click here, and that's it. I have the STL already. Thank you, Carlo. And if I open it here, I can, I have the scan. It is in free 3D scan for everybody, right? <laughs> yes, we can. We can scan. We, you, you saw how fast this was. It's just a couple of clicks can just to get the STS. Yeah, of course. Everybody has done that, of course. And then, then yeah, yeah. Come on. Scan you. We, yeah, we can choose black ABS for that. Uh, let me see where the app went. Remember, how was Han Solo frozen in Star Wars? Well, he was. He was screaming. Exactly. There you go. So let, let me see that I, you're here, okay? I'm too. Okay, so that's about good. And okay, so stand still. And you're done. I got you now. Okay. And so I have you now in, uh, or we'll have you later on. on let's see if that looked right. And yeah, it looks, that looks, looks pretty good, actually. <laughs> And yeah, you can see it's very simple uh, software, very fast. 
it's all open source, it's free. Uh, uh, if anybody wants to see uh, or wants the code, it's pretty much a, um, a compilation of about four or five different libraries for processing, just thrown together for, for this very simple application. It's, uh, it's very fast to, to scan people, and you know, it's a very ludic, very you know, easy, easy results. And we can scan whoever wants to be scanned, we'll send the scans by email, and if we have time, we'll also uh, print some of them. And that's it. How many cameras? How many cameras? Just one. Just one? Yeah. Uh, the Kinect works, uh, has, it's, it's very, it's a lot of technology packed in one little device. It's actually, it doesn't do um, stereoscopic imaging. It's, it does, what it does is it shines an infrared uh, cloud in, fr in, in top of the uh, object, in front of the object. And then it compares this, this infrared um, uh, pattern to uh, its own calibration pattern. And it, it correlates how much the points have moved uh, compared to its own pattern. Uh, every Kinect has a unique pattern. And then it can, uh, from then, it detects the depth. It also has many other things. It has a color camera that detects where you are. It has, um, it does have stereo microphones to detect where you are in space and also who is playing. Because if, I, if I'm playing with, a, with another person and we moved, we switch places, the, it recognizes voice. So it knows who is who. So you know, it doesn't make uh, mistakes in the, in, the, um, in, the, um, in the game. Also, it has a servo that tilts uh, automatically also, depending on where you are. So you know, if, if you're moving out of range or, or if you move closer, then it tilts automatically. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite nice technology all packed in, in a, one nice little controller. I don't know if there's any other questions. What about sense of fusion, the sense of having an array of these? Yeah, you, that's what, the, what these uh, people from Barcelona did. They, they put together three. So instead of having just one more flattish looking 3D, uh, they have 360 degree. The quality is, is, is the same, but it's just in a 360 degree, so you can have a person uh, standing. You don't have the problem of shadows that we have here. See? That's like, for example, I, I don't know if it's that one. The other one uh, does have a couple of holes in the face because it, it was shot from too close. So it, there was some shadows, and the shadows were detected as, as, as holes in the, in the mesh, and so uh, as those that were printed. How big is this file? This, this file is, a, I think it's 7 megs, you can see here. But it's, but it's because we, we used a very high detail. But you don't need so much detail because the printer will not be able to print that high detail. So even a 1 mega, mega file, even half of a mega file will, will, will suffice for, for that. So it can be easily attached to an email if anybody wants to have uh, themselves scanned. We should print it now. Yeah, we can print it. The thing is that uh, that's going to take some time. I think for printing um, that figure, I don't know, Carlo, how much it took. Uh, I think a couple of hours, an hour no, and a half. Not so much, but uh, maybe an hour at least. Maybe at least. Hour, yes. you know, maybe even less. So, are you going to stay here a little bit yes. after dinner? So, yeah. is somebody interested in coming back after dinner here in the lab to do something like 3D scan of himself or herself or? playing with the 3D modeling software. If, if there's people, we can remain, uh, say, 8.30 to 10 or something like that. OK? Tell also to the other people if they are around. If, you, if not, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, thank you very much. We organize ourselves also for tomorrow for uh, labor, more laboratory time. Okay. Thank you very much.